Hey y'all, so I am coming live because I'm supposed to be on a group coaching call but nobody showed up and I was going to update my story but then I realized I was talking for a very long time and thought like it would be better just to do a live because I also missed my live time on Sunday because it was a whole thing. Anyway, for those who do not know me, I'm Marbette. I am a dissertation strategist. I help folks finish and successfully defend their critical qualitative dissertation. Today, I want to talk about something that has been a theme for me, been a theme just in life in general with clients, with myself. Maybe I should, you know, let me just let me just put down a little title. It's called, you know, what step are you on? So um, maybe you're like me and you like have all these goals. Whenever you get any free time, you like, oh, I could go do all these things. So one thing that I've been working on is getting back in the gym. When I was doing my PhD process, I was in the gym um, a good four or five days a week, if not more. And um, that just that moving to Milwaukee, that changed. And I said, okay, well, I want to get back in the gym. And in my mind, I was like, well, I should be able to go from sitting on my couch every day, watching all the hours of YouTube, to being on somebody's like, to being like back to that five hour, not five hour, five day a week situation. And that's not the truth. But I just feel like, why should I have to put in all the extra work, right? Like, why should I have not extra work? Why should I have to go through all those different um, steps? Like, why should I have to go through all the different steps if I already did this before and I could be at 10? Like, I put in all the work. So why do I have to like go through each step? And maybe you feel that same way about something in your life. You feel like, oh, all that other stuff, I know this already. Maybe you say things like, I know this already. I don't need to start at the beginning. I'm more of a, an expert or whatever. Right, when it comes down to writing your dissertation, a lot of people will say like, I should be able to sit down and write my first draft and it'd be good because I've been in school for this long. I've been writing this long. Like, why is this so hard? Why is this so difficult? And people quickly realize real quick um, that that's not how it is, um, that it takes more time than you thought that maybe you're not as a good of a writer as you thought it's not even about being a good writer but th that's a whole different topic um that if they took it like one article at a time or one section at a time or even if they did like you know starting with how we're taught but like you write an outline and then you write a first draft and then you edit and you write another draft and another draft folks feel like they shouldn't have to do that anymore they feel like they have grown and are beyond that and that's not true because <laughs> you realize like when you look up that you started your dissertation in january and you look up and it's about to be august and you still in the same chapter that's how you know that you're trying to skip steps or you go to do whatever the goal is you go in this case you go to write and you feel like you're physically going to pass out or die or something that's also how you know that you are skipping steps or if someone gives you a suggestion and you say oh that's too easy I'm beyond that you're skipping steps that means you are at step one and you're trying to be at step 10 and if you could picture somebody trying to like they're at the bottom of the staircase and they're trying to jump all the way at the top like you ever did that like you were bored and you little kids and like how far can I jump up the steps think about that in this analogy that you're trying to do the same thing y'all got distracted and even finished my my thing um, but think about that in the same way of that's what you're trying to do now with writing your dissertation. A lot of times I tell my clients to just write. Don't worry about um, don't worry about if it's right. Don't worry about if it's like you got the right references or not. Just write. Right. Write what you know. And then they'll say, no, I need to read this. I need to do all of that. And I'm like, no, you know a lot. Just write. 
But then that's, to me, an indication of they think they're on step five when they're really on step one. And if they would just start at step one and go to step two and go to step three, they would be at step five in no time. But we don't want to do that. We want to be able to hop off the couch and run a marathon. We want to be able to go from not doing any writing to having a perfectly dissertation that they're ready to defend tomorrow. When the truth is, say you did sit down and you did write and you did have a dissertation that your chair was like, okay, let's defend this tomorrow. Would you be ready? Would you be comfortable in even knowing that you can answer every question? Would you feel like confident going in? Do you think they would sign off on it? Would you feel like you prepared? Probably not because you didn't go through the journey. Probably not because you didn't do like step one, two, three, four, and five. You didn't go through all the things and really give yourself time to think through things because you thought it was gonna take too long, because you thought you knew it already, or you knew better. I see it happen with a lot of people. They try to do that. And then when their chair comes down, it snatches all the edges and tells them this is essentially trash, then their feelings are hurt. And now they want to just give up the whole PhD process and they don't want to do it anymore. And they have to start back at step one anyway. So my advice to you would be, how can you start at your step one? Whether or not it feels easy or not, how could you start there and then go to step two? Because if you can't even write one section of your literature review, how can you write a whole dissertation? If you're so busy trying to skip through all of that, right, you can't even prove that you can write one page, let alone a 50, 60 page proposal. So if you can't even write one page, what makes you think you can sit down and write 60 pages? So how can you start at step one instead of getting to step 10 and respect the process? It's hard, it's frustrating. I even get frustrated because I'm like, I should be able to do this, I should be further along. But if you should have been, then you would have, you would be. But because you're not, that's an indication that you have to start where you are and it's okay. And you're just not gonna, you're not gonna get there any faster by saying you should have, would have, whatever, like standing your head about it, the only way you're going to get to step 10 is by doing the work of going through all the steps to get there. Now, I'm talking in like analogies, but I really hope that you can sit down and like receive this message of what I'm saying because it's important to do the journey instead of trying to figure out how you can get there before you you try to think about like, um, what am I trying to say before you can like get the attention for like oh posting the picture of I defended this I'm doctor so and so you got to get to the journey so one thing I, I like to think about I think about like famous people or um, celebrities and you know I love Beyonce right and so I think about Beyonce as this seven year old kid eight year old kid who is maybe she because she has to go to like work with her mom her mom worked in a salon owned her own salon and here's this kid who loves to sing and perform and dance and do all these things right and you know how <laughs> go places and kids can be annoying right they're being kids and I'm just thinking about this seven or eight year old who would I mean people are in the chair maybe they're under the dryer and she's just singing and dancing and performing because they can't go nowhere and it's the audience and she's just doing what she's doing right that was like that was her step one of she loved to sing and she had all the energy and she would just perform for the people in the salon some of them getting her nerves some of them thoroughly enjoying her right she started there and then her dad said oh she's talented let's get a group together and so he got these group of young girls together at nine and then he would like put them through summer boot camps type training to work on their stamina and their performance and they had to practice and practice and so something that used to be probably really fun and enjoyable got serious really quick and now at nine and ten Beyonce and her friends or these other members of the group are performing 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 
and they are now going to all these important meetings where they're meeting with record execs, A&R reps, all these music people that they have to perform from in front of. They have to do all these talent shows and they have to like just put in all this work, right? Which I'm sure they probably at that point had other things to do. And, you know, they perform. Um, and there's this one story that she tells about like they finally get a call from Columbia Records and they want to see them, but they want to see them perform and they go and they get put into a hotel and they're kids because they're nine and they want to go swimming before the like the night before they're supposed to perform. So they swim, they have a good time and then they show up the next morning to do the performance and they're doing all the steps. It looks good, but they sound a little nasally because, um, they have water you know like what happens when you have water in your nose and you've been playing and whatever and their dad stops the performance he completely stops the performance and says sorry we wasted your time they're not ready we're leaving peace and I just think like at nine years old right for something that you've been working really hard because to practice every day as a little kid time and time and time again and you finally get what you think is going to be your big break and then your father says, nope, they're not ready because they went swimming because they had some fun. He caused the whole thing off and you don't get your record deal. And I'm sure Beyonce probably thought, like they all probably thought that was their step 10 when really it was like their step two, right? Because we know they go on and they do star search and, you know, eventually they get down, they stop being the singing, rapping group and become an R&B group and there's four of them and they get signed as Destiny's Child. And even then, that was Beyonce Step 10, right? So my point is, we always have a journey and we always have steps to, steps to go on. And if you get to a place where you getting your back about it or you feel entitled that you shouldn't have to do all that work and you shouldn't have to do the journey, that you should be able to take shortcuts and you, sh you should be able to skip steps and that you should be able to get to Step 10 and you haven't done all the other steps, then I'm going to say you're never going to get to Step 10 because you're trying to rush it and you feel entitled and you think you need shortcuts. But instead, showing up, taking the time to do the work, like they had to go home as kids and go do the work all over again and go back to being practice to practicing. And I'm sure they were a little bit deflated because they didn't have to deal, but like that made them work harder. And the next time they had to perform for Columbia Records, they were ready and they didn't take chances and they were prepared and they got the deal. Right? So, again, I feel like I'm rambling, but I just want you to think about what is your step one right now? And how can you prove and master step one before moving to step two? And when you get that concept and when you understand the importance of that, that's when you'll look up and you'll be at step 10. But if you're so busy at step one trying to figure out how to get to step 10 and skip all that in between, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting everybody else's time. And that's why you're getting the response you're getting. So that is all. I'd be curious to know if you anything um, you take away from this or anything like that. And I will see you in the stories or next time. Bye.